If you are just following along or here for the first time, this video is all about my results from doing building thinking classrooms for an entire year with my kindergarten classroom. Now, when I first started, I was a little bit skeptical because when you teach young kids and things are marked K to 12, you have to consider like, is this really something that'll work for kindergarten and 12th grade students? And I'm here to tell you that it absolutely does. Seeing my kids grow this year as mathematicians and problem solvers has been incredible. It really, really has. Transformational, I would say. So what are some of my results? So let's hop right into it. What are some things that I saw these kids doing? My students became such great problem solvers. Like I'm so, so, so impressed. And I'm gonna tell you a little bit about what's going on. If your school is anything like mine, they're all about data and such. And in the state that I'm in, we have to give the students a math assessment in the beginning of the year and at the end of the year. And we've given this assessment for a couple years now. And there are some questions on it that are technically like first grade questions are not for kindergarten. So I never really worried too much if the students could do it or not. Like I might have showed them similar questions, but if they weren't ready for it, they just weren't ready for it. And I wasn't too bothered if they understood them or not. And I just kind of let it go. And that was always kind of a tricky question, especially because it's really wordy and it's not something that the kids are used to doing. They're used to doing more straightforward questions. And let me tell you, the majority of my students were able to solve those questions, like no problem, no problem. Even my students who had a harder time learning their numbers, remembering what numbers look like, and even counting one-to-one -one correspondence, they were still able to figure out how to solve this problem and I was blown away. Another kind of example of my results was in 2020, I had created like a Jeopardy game and an escape room style game called the Number Thief. And basically all of them have some kind of question that the kids have to answer in pairs or individually or in a group to see how they would do and if they could win at Jeopardy or find all of the numbers. And usually when I do these games, like it's right, it was just about at the right level. Like most kids, like I wouldn't say, I don't know, 50, 60% of the kids could definitely understand it. For some of them it was a stretch and for some of them it was a little bit too difficult. When I tell you that these kids just breezed through these questions, they breezed through the questions. And I was like, hmm, maybe I needed to make them a little bit more challenging. And my the group of students that I have this year, I would say were pretty pretty typical in their number sense coming in. You know, we have some students who had a lot of background knowledge, some students that didn't have a ton of background knowledge and had a lot of room for growth, but they weren't necessarily like starting at a really, really, really high place or a really, really low place. They were just kind of typical for what I would see at the beginning of the year kindergarten and just the amount of growth and problem solving and logical thinking that I saw with these kids was really, really incredible. Something else I have been struggling with for a while is to really get my kids to solve problems, to stop and think about what is going on and try and solve the problems. And this year, more than any other year doing building thinking classrooms, I just saw no hesitation. I would present the problem in five minutes or less, usually with some kind of a story. They were excited to get their partner cards and just got right to it. And let me tell you, when they didn't, when I tell you they didn't ask me questions, they didn't ask me questions even starting from the very, very first, like it could be because they didn't have the background knowledge to know that, oh, if I ask the teacher a question, then they'll give me the answer. They hardly ever asked me questions, and which was really, really amazing to see. Like they weren't dependent on me for solving the problem. They knew that I wouldn't, they knew that I wasn't just gonna give them the answer, but their first go-to was to ask their partner or look around and, get ideas from another group or just go over and ask another group, what are you doing? How are you solving it? And it was led to really rich discussions for the kindergarten level in math and problem solving. Something else that I wasn't expecting was how far above the curriculum and the standards these kids could work when they were in this problem solving mode. For example, one of my questions was, you know, it was around Easter. I don't know if you celebrate Easter, but even if you don't celebrate Easter, you see the peeps everywhere and there's 10 peeps in the package. So I showed a picture of it and I said, if I want to share, you know, these peeps equally with my um, teaching assistant, how many would each 
a bus get? And fair share is something that a lot of kids understand. They're like, oh, five, easy, showed their work and everything. So then I was like, okay, what if you wanna share with three people? Or what if you wanna share with four people with their thin slicing? And they got right to it. They're like, okay, I have to do this and I have to do this and I need to figure it out this way. And keep in mind, I hadn't really talked about fair share at all. This was before we even started our fractions unit. And where I am in Virginia, the standard is that they need to share equally with two or four equal sharers. They had already gotten to three. When you went to the check your understanding, it was challenging. It was higher numbers. Could be that they have to cut something in half. And again, they took right to it and were able to solve that problem and persisted through if they were struggling, which not a lot of them even were. And I was just like, wow, without any direct instruction, they were thinking through what they might do or what they had seen, pulling their own background knowledge and applying it to the problem. And they applied it to most problems in any context that I gave it to, which was really cool, really cool to see. Now those are my results and just kind of reflecting back and thinking back, I'm gonna tell you about some things that I noticed that I was just curious. I was like, hmm, that's interesting, curiosities, and I don't know if anybody else has experienced this or can relate to, but something maybe to keep an eye out for. The kids loved working in partners in any capacity. If we were doing something that was completely unrelated to BTC, they still wanted to work in partners. That was kind of their choice to gravitate towards each other. And I realized that for standardized testing and that kind of thing, they're not going to be able to work in partners. But overall, globally in life, they're going to have to work with other people. So the fact that they liked it so much, I feel like is a life skill that will serve them for the long haul. And they also really loved working on the whiteboards. I think if you have read the book, which I will link to below, if you've read the book, they talk about how maybe it's because it's easily erased or something like that. The kids are less afraid to try new things and make a mistake. And I would definitely say that I saw the same, but whenever I gave the kids their check their understanding questions, they hardly ever chose to work on the board. And even if they did go over to where they were working before, they weren't actually using the board. They were just using like a flat surface by their board. And I don't really know, I don't know why that was, but just something interesting that I noticed. Another odd noticing is students who would come in that would be traditionally like higher students in the sense that they had a lot of background knowledge about numbers and number sense already. When they were paired up together, they weren't necessarily the strongest partnerships. They usually tried to make things more complicated than they needed to be that ended up slowing them down or giving them a little bit of trouble when they tried to solve a problem. And I'm not really sure why that is either. Usually the the most successful partnerships I saw were ones that had like various abilities like maybe somebody had a really good idea of how to solve the problem but what was limiting them was how high they could count or they didn't know how to write the number that they needed whereas their partner might not have been as gung-ho in trying to throwing themselves in and solving the problem but they could know the numbers or they knew how to write the numbers so then together they were able to solve the problem and record their answers and those partnerships were chef's kiss amazing. This might just be unique to me, but one of my non-permanent surfaces was technically not vertical because he had a U table that had dry erase on top of it and it didn't have enough vertical spaces. So the kids would be working, I had two groups working at the U table and everybody else was at a vertical non-permanent surface. And I didn't really think about it too much, but that U table was also used for, you know, math centers when we were doing other things. So it had chairs around it. And I didn't think anything of it. I was like, they have a whiteboard, they're working on it. And no matter which group was at that U table, if they were sitting down, they were not as persistent. They were not as into trying the problem and they were more likely to just kind of relax and chat versus trying the problem. So once I made sure to remove the chairs whenever we were doing a math task, it changed and I thought that was so bizarre because it didn't matter who was over there like motivated students students who were not always as self-motivated it didn't matter they reverted to I'm just gonna sit here and relax instead of let's try to get to work so if I were to do it again I would make sure to always remove the chairs from that space when we we're doing a math task okay that just leads me into kind of my next section where things that I would consider or try and tweak starting over for another year with a new group of students. 
I would spend more time developing their skill, their discussion skills about problem solving. Now, that's not to say it wasn't successful, it absolutely was, but I think that if more kids had the language to really discuss what was going on, some students who would participate less would be more comfortable kind of throwing in their ideas into the mix of problem solving. And some students would thought, well, oh, they're not saying anything. They don't know how to solve the problem, but that was rarely the case. Usually they might've just been shy or not sure how to express their ideas, but once given the opportunity, they absolutely could solve the problem, maybe even in a more efficient way than the partner who was doing most of the talking. So I would spend more time developing those conversational skills that would help them with their problem solving. I would also spend more time consolidating their learning and really kind of having them be more reflective on what was going on. By the time we finished our task and did our check your understanding, they were usually kind of done at that point. So I kind of moved on, but I would definitely make that more of a priority, really talking about the learning that we were doing for the next steps or for whatever we were doing next. And going along with check your understanding, I would really try and emphasize that the point of check your understanding is, as it says, it's for you to see if you understood what was going on during our problem solving session instead of just kind of some thing else that the teacher wants me to do that I have to do. I would really make sure that they understood that that was for them and not for me. And finally, I would try to find a better balance between build, building thinking classroom tasks and just general math things because I was so focused on it. I noticed that some kids and this might just be a kindergarten issue because we're just learning our numbers. Some students, not all by any means, but there was a like, group of students who really could have used more practice with like number identification and number writing, like number formation, like those kind of things. I feel like because it was focused on this, I didn't spend as much time on that. And some of those kids would have really benefited from more practice. So that's something else I really want to try and focus on for next time. If I haven't convinced you yet that this is definitely something you should try, even with young, young students, I want to invite you to try an example. So in the link in the description, I have a freebie that I would love for you to give a try. So in this freebie, there are Google Slides, like a few Google Slides to go with the story of the task, task directions, a building thinking classrooms, term cheat sheet, the color partner cards that I used, check your understandings in the mild, medium, and spicy version, and ideas for thin slicing for this task. So like I said, grab that in the link in the description. I would love for you to try and let me know how it goes. You can do that on Instagram. You can send me an email. I'd love to hear about it. Obviously, it's something I'm passionate about. Love talking about it. And if you do, I would love for you to share with a colleague. And I'm going to sneak in a little bit of my experience sharing with one of my colleagues and how she really enjoyed it too. So about three quarters of the way through the year, I was like, man, you know, these kids are working so hard. They're doing so well. I would hate for them to go to first grade and just have it all fall to the wayside. The main reason that I wanted to try this is because I wanted the kids to be good problem solvers in any context, not just rely on an algorithm as they get older to solve a problem, but really think about the problems that they're doing and be able to solve them in a way that makes sense to them. So I was like, I've been working on it so hard. I would hate for it to go unused, I guess. So I talked to a colleague in first grade who would have a lot of my students next year. And I was like, is this something? I showed her some pictures of some of the work that the kids were producing. I was like, is this something that you think you might be willing to try? And she was like, yes. So I loaned her the book and she started with my students from last year and Last year's students, I feel like, would have been great for it because they were just so, so chill. They were definitely a unicorn class. Like, I didn't really have any behavior problems. They got along with each other. They were super kind to each other. Like, that group would have done amazing in this context, I feel, and would have really thrived. So we got a lot of chance to discuss, like, what I was doing, what she might be doing. And since I had the benefit of knowing all of her students, I was like, oh, they might really do this well. They might really do this well. And one student that I was concerned about academically who just was really struggling to find connections with math he and her the, and the partner got paired together and she was telling me how those kids worked on it for a long time they felt confident in their ability to solve problems and tried it and actually figured it out and 
you know if you work with struggling, I mean, every I'm, I don't know a, stu a teacher who doesn't work with struggling students, how hard it is to get them to engage and to try sometimes if they already feel like they don't know the answer. So hearing her tell me that just gave me chills. It's like, oh my gosh, like, I wish I would have done it with my kids last year so they would have been able to do it too and have that experience and it might have set them on a different trajectory for the next year. But with her doing it with her kids and following up, I'm really confident that these kids are going to continue to grow in their strength as problem solving and i hope that your students do too if you choose to try building thinking classrooms in the freebie i mentioned i have a link i have a page with some helpful links to other blogs i've written other videos i've done as well as a facebook group specifically for k-2 there's one for k-2 three to five middle school high school general but the one that i'm going to link to specifically for k-2 and they have some just amazing, amazing teachers in that group who share their ideas, share problems that they've done, tasks that they've done. So that's something that you should definitely check out. Like I said before, I would love to talk about it with you more. DM me on Instagram, send me an email, and let me know how it goes and let me know if you have any questions. I will see you next time.